history lovers. Welcome to This Tweet in History, the Week in Review, podcasting to you on tape delay from our North American studios. Here are your top stories for the week ending March 13th, 2010. World Dateline France, March 9, 1765. Three years after his conviction, torture, and execution, Jean Calas' sentence is overturned. The backstory. In an era of predominant Catholicism in France, Protestant Jean Collat and his family were looked down upon and mistrusted. When one of Collat's sons was found dead after another had converted to Catholicism, the rumor swirled that Jean had killed the second in order to prevent him, too, from converting. The following spring, Collat was convicted of murder. A day after the conviction, the brutal sentence was carried out. Collat was tortured and killed. France's famed writer Voltaire was apprised of the case, and after the Fuhrer died down, secured an exoneration for Calau on the one-year anniversary of his conviction. Sports, Dateline Baltimore, March 11, 1901. Orioles signed Chief Yokohama, seeking to get around baseball's blackout. The backstory. Years before Jackie Robinson crossed baseball's color line, there was Charles Grant. Grant was the second baseman in the Negro Leagues who came to the attention of John McGraw, owner of the Baltimore Orioles, when the team stayed at the Eastland Hotel in Hot Springs, Arkansas during spring training. Grant, a bellhop at the hotel, was playing a pickup game with fellow employees. McGraw recognized Grant's major league talent and signed the light-skinned player up under the pretense that he was a Native American, Chief Charlie Tokahama. Grant was never to play in the big show. On a swing through Chicago, where Grant had played in the Negro League, he was fettered by former teammates and recognized by Chicago White Sox president, Charles Comiskey. Entertainment, Dateline London, March 10, 1988. Drug weakened heart gives out, disco phenom dies just after 30th birthday. The backstory. Andy Gibb was a shooting star in the music world, the first artist to have his first three releases reach number one in the height of the disco craze. Like a shooting star, he burned out far too quickly, fell by disco's meteoric fall from favor and his own cocaine addictions. His star appeared to be on the rise again a decade after its fall, on a ride that included bankruptcy and rehab. Shortly after his 30th birthday, Gibb, who was about to start work on a new record, went into the hospital with stomach pains. Three days later, he was dead of an inflammation of the heart. Although he was long over his cocaine addiction, the damage the drug had done to his heart was irreversible. This week's birthdays, March 7th, composer Maurice Ravel. March 8th, monkey Mickey Dolenz. March 9th, explorer Amerigo Vespucci. March 10th, jazz musician Bix Spiderbeck. March 11th, author Douglas Adams. March 12th, author Jack Kerouac. And March 13th, singer-songwriter Neil Sebeka. Thank you for joining us for this Tweet in History, the Week in Review. Be sure to follow us at twitter.com slash historytweet and check our archives at historytweet.blogspot.com.